Ever feel like you're not quite yourself? Well, buckle up, because it turns out the trillions of tiny tenants in your gut might be pulling your personality strings. That's right. The bacteria living rent-free in your intestines could be shaping everything from your social life to your stress levels. And here's the kicker. What you ate for breakfast might just be changing who you are. Welcome to the wild world of the gut-brain connection, where science is serving up a whole new meaning to you are what you eat. Hey there, all you beautiful biological ecosystems masquerading as humans. Theodore here, ready to take you on a mind-bending journey through the twists and turns of your own gut. Today, we're diving deep into the bacterial jungle living inside you. And trust me, it's way more exciting than it sounds. We've got cutting-edge research that's about to flip your understanding of personality upside down. So grab your microscopes and your yogurt, because we're about to get up close and personal with the tiny critters that might just be running the show in your brain. Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready to dive into something really interesting. Today we're talking about the gut microbiome with a twist. Oh, <laughs> do tell. We're exploring the connection between the bacteria in our gut, you know, our microbiome and our personalities. Oh, wow. Okay, this should be good. I know there's been some research, right? Yeah. A new study from the Human Microbiome Journal. Okay, and they were looking at what, like, if there's a link between the types of bacteria we have and how social we are or how anxious maybe. Exactly. We all know about gut feelings, but this goes way beyond that. So it's like, are our personalities actually influenced by what's going on in our gut? That's the big question. All right, all right, I'm hooked. What did they find? Well, one of the big findings was that people with a more diverse range of bacteria in their gut what researchers call greater gut diversity, tended to have larger social networks. Hmm, interesting. So more friends, more diverse bacteria. That's what the study suggests. And it kind of makes you think, right? Like, are our social butterflies actually just benefiting from a richer inner ecosystem? That is pretty wild when you think about it like that. And what about the opposite? Like, did they find anything about people with less diverse microbiomes? They did. Those with less diverse gut bacteria were more likely to report feeling stressed or anxious. Huh. So maybe our gut bacteria play a role in how we handle stress and interact with others. That's what this research is pointing to, which, yeah. I mean, it's kind of mind-blowing. Absolutely. And did they go into detail about any specific types of bacteria? Yeah, they found Acromancia, Lactococcus, and Oscillispora were more common in people who are more outgoing. And those are like the good guys, so to speak. It seems that way. They also found disulfovibrio and ceterella were more common in those who were less social. Interesting. Okay, let's break this down for a second. You know how some people seem to make friends wherever they go, while others prefer a quiet night in? Well, it turns out your social butterfly status might have less to do with your charming smile and more to do with the party happening in your intestines. It's like your gut is throwing a microbial mixer and the more diverse the guest list, the more likely you are to be out there mingling. Who knew making friends was an inside job? So is this the first time they've found a connection with these particular bacteria? Well, what's really interesting is that disulfovibrio, that's one of the bacteria linked to lower sociability, has also been studied in the context of autism. Oh, wow, really? And we know social interaction can be a challenge in autism. So does this mean it suggests there might be a broader link between these bacteria and how we socialize, maybe even across a spectrum. Okay, now that is fascinating. But it definitely raises some questions, like how much of who we are is shaped by what's going on in our gut? Yeah. And it gets even more intriguing when you start thinking about things like our early life experiences and the food we eat. You're talking about how those things affect our gut bacteria. Exactly. Like, get this. They found that adults who were formula-fed as babies had less diverse gut microbiomes as adults compared to those who were breastfed. Hold on, wait, are you saying what we're fed as infants could have a lasting impact on our gut bacteria even decades later? All right, hold on to your baby bottles, folks, because this is where it gets wild. Remember that time you spit up on your mom's shoulder? Yeah, that might be affecting your social life now. 
It's like your gut has been keeping a bacterial baby book this whole time. Breastfed babies seem to grow up with a more diverse gut party, while formula-fed folks might have a slightly less rowdy bacterial bash going on. But hey, don't panic if you were a formula baby. There's still time to invite some new bacterial guests to your gut gala. That's what the research suggests. Wow. And is this the first time they've looked at the long-term impact like that? This is actually the first study to specifically examine the long-term impact of infant diet on the adult microbiome. Wow. That is significant. I mean, it makes you wonder about, like, parents who choose to formula feed. Yeah. Or maybe didn't have a choice. Right, right. Huge implications there. And it just shows how important it is, I think, to keep researching this whole area. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, is there anything you can do later in life to make up for it? Okay, so we've talked about, yeah. like, the diversity thing, right? Yeah. And how what we're fed as babies plays a role. Uh-huh. What about, like, just in our everyday lives, you know, what we eat now? Did they look into that at all? Oh, yeah, they definitely did. Actually, one of the things they looked at was probiotics. Okay, yeah, yeah. Everyone's talking about probiotics these days. So, like, did yeah. they find a connection there between probiotics and personality, I mean? Okay, so this is where it gets really interesting. Hold on to your hat. Okay, I've been already. They found that people who were eating foods that are naturally rich in probiotics. Okay, yogurt. Yeah, yogurt, sauerkraut. Or kimchi, all that good stuff. Exactly, exactly. They tended to have less anxiety, lower levels of anxiety. Okay, but, so that makes sense, right? Eat your yogurt, stress less. Right, right. Seems straightforward. But here's the thing. They didn't find the same thing with probiotic supplements. Wait. Seriously? Yeah. So, like, popping a pill is different than eating your kimchi. What's going on there? <laughs> That is the million dollar question. I mean, we don't know for sure. But yeah. one theory is that it's not just about having probiotics, period. It's about, remember how we talked about diversity? Yeah. It might be about the diversity of bacteria you get from those fermented foods. Oh, interesting. So it's not just like one kind of bacteria. Yeah. It's having a whole bunch of them all working together. Yeah, like a whole ecosystem. Right, right. So maybe the supplements, they're just too... I don't know, one dimensional. I mean, maybe, maybe. It could be that those diverse bacteria are interacting in ways that we don't even understand yet, <laughs> you know, creating a more balanced environment in your gut. Okay, yeah. So it's not just about the individual bacteria. It's about the whole community. Exactly. This is so wild. So, okay, our early experiences matter. What we eat matters. But is it just a one-way street? Hmm. Like, can our personalities actually influence our gut bacteria too? Oh, that's a great question. And I think a lot of researchers are trying to figure that out. Like which comes first? It's probably not that simple. It's more like a two-way street, you know? What do you mean? Well, think about it. Your personality, your traits, those can affect the kind of food you choose, right? Like some people are adventurous eaters. They'll try anything. Right, exactly. And someone who's like more, I don't know, cautious, they might stick to the same foods all the time. So more variety in your diet could lead to more diversity in your gut, which could then make you even more adventurous. See? It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. Like, could you actually change someone's personality yeah. by messing with their gut bacteria? There are studies looking at whether changing your diet or taking probiotics. But anyway, they're seeing if those things can help with things like anxiety and depression, even autism. Wow. So we're talking about potentially treating mental health conditions by changing the bacteria in your gut. It's still early days. But yeah, that's the idea. It's pretty amazing stuff. It really is. It's like we're just starting to understand how powerful this connection is, the gut-brain connection. It's a whole new frontier. Totally. What do you hope people remember from all of this? I think the biggest thing is we can't just think about our health in these separate boxes anymore, right? Like there's our mental health, there's our yeah. physical health. It's all connected. So it's not just about going to the gym and eating your veggies, though that's still important. Right, exactly. It's about taking care of that whole ecosystem inside us too, our gut microbiome, yeah. making sure it's healthy and balanced. And how do we do that? Well, diversity is key, right? Like we yeah. talked about, eating a wide range of foods, yeah. especially those fermented foods, the yogurt, the kimchi, those are your friends. Bring on the good bacteria. Exactly. Feed your gut. I love it. I love it. I agree. I agree. And this topic, it's just like the tip of the iceberg. You yeah. know, there's so much more to learn. That's for sure. And on that note, we'll leave everyone with this. If our gut bacteria can affect our personalities, who knows what else they're influencing, right? Yeah. Something to think about. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. We'll see you next time.
Well, fellow biological mysteries, we've been on quite the journey today, haven't we? From the depths of your gut to the heights of your social calendar, it's clear that we're all walking, talking ecosystems with a lot more going on inside than we ever realized. So, the next time you're feeling a bit off, maybe don't just blame it on waking up on the wrong side of the bed. You might have woken up on the wrong side of your microbiome. Remember, you're not just eating for one anymore. You're eating for the trillions of tiny tenants that call your gut home. So be kind to your internal community, feed them well, and who knows, you might just personality hack your way to being the life of the party, or at least to feeling a bit less anxious about going to one. Until next time, this is Theodore, signing off and reminding you to trust your gut. It might know you better than you know yourself. <laughs>